everybody, it's Lisa Burningham and I am so glad you're here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do five coastal and summer inspired home decor DIYs. The shell vase that I got was from Beals and it was on clearance for $3.74, which is a great way to start off a project. I love a bargain. Inside of the opening of the vase shell, I'm going to place in some floral foam. I'm just gonna wedge it right in there so it's really tight and secure. To the top of the foam, I'm going to add some reindeer moss. I like to use moss over the foam because if you do see through the succulents or whatever flower you happen to be working with, I personally like to look at moss as opposed to the foam. So I am going to be putting reindeer moss over the top and I'm going to be securing the moss to the foam using floral pins. The succulents that I'm using for this arrangement are from the Dollar Tree. They had such a nice variety of sizes and shaped ones there and you can't go wrong with spending a dollar per succulent. So I started with the longest stemmed succulent first. I placed that at the top and then with these other smaller ones they came in a pot and so what I did to get those out was I just kind of wiggled them a little bit and they just popped right out and they had a bit of a stem and so I just placed that stem right inside of the floral foam and then I placed the smaller succulents running down the shell container. I used a total of four succulents which was the perfect amount. This way, each succulent was close enough to each other but didn't overlap. And you could see each individual succulent. For a few dollars, I got this beautiful arrangement, this shell and all the succulents inside, and I think it was a great bargain. My home decor DIYs are in collaboration with Heidi Sambel and her friend Friday Hop. Heidi is such an amazing creator. She comes up with some really unique and creative ideas on her channel. I'll leave a link to her channel in the description box below. And like I said, this collaboration is a hop and there are so many wonderful and talented ladies that are joining in on this hop. So make sure that once you're done watching my video that you go to my description box and get the link to the next video. And once you're done watching that video, follow the loop and click on that link to the next video. Make sure that you check out all of those videos. I know you will be inspired with all of the wonderful things that these ladies make. I got this captain's wheel frame at the Dollar Tree and I immediately thought that frame will look great inside of a frame. And so that's what we're gonna do today. It's almost like a shadow box. So the first thing that I did with this captain's wheel was I decided I wanted to stain it. So I used a Minwax Walnut Shade, I got a sponge brush, and I brushed that stain over the top of the circle backing first. I placed the stain on it evenly, and then I got a paper towel and I wiped off the stain. I like to do that because I believe it brings out the wood grain a little bit better and it makes sure that the stain is even throughout the entire surface of the wood that you're working with. That way one part is a little bit darker than the other. It's all cohesive. So I continue to put the stain on the captain's wheel, on the handles and on the back side of everything. And then I wiped it off again with that paper towel and then I let it dry for a few hours. I'm placing a compass inside of my captain's wheel. I found this compass online. It was a free printable and I will leave a link to where I got it in my description box below. So I printed it off and then I got the circular backer to the frame, placed that on top of my compass and then I got a pencil and I traced around the circle. Then I got a pair of scissors, cut out my compass, to embellish my captain's wheel a little bit further, I'm going to add some gold laying cord to each of the handles. I got this laying cord at Michael's in the jewelry section. I got a dab of hot glue and I placed that on the back of the handle, put the end of the laying cord in the hot glue, and then I began to wrap it around the handle. I did it about 10 times and then I cut it off, added another dab of hot glue, and I pressed the lame cord into the glue, which secured everything together. And then I continued to do it to each one of the handles. 
and then I placed that compass inside of my captain's wheel and placed the backer on the back. Now that my captain's wheel is finished, I'm going to place it into a larger frame that again is from the Dollar Tree. But before I do that, I'm going to place some scrapbook paper behind as a backer. I love this scrapbook paper. It's the perfect selection for this piece that looks like water and I just love the sparkles that it has on it. It adds some extra dimension. What I did was I took the mat out of the frame. I placed it on top of my scrapbook paper. I got a pencil and I traced around it and then I cut it out. Then I got my captain's wheel, I added some hot glue to the back of the captain's wheel and pressed it firmly into the center of the scrapbook paper. Now that everything is glued together and finished, I could put it all back into the frame. I love the way that this turned out. It looks like an expensive piece from a department store. And the only money that I spent was $1 on the captain's wheel. I had everything else. So for a dollar, I am a happy camper. My next project is a look for less. I found my inspiration piece on the Pottery Barn website. It was these wooden link objects. I just fell in love with them. However, I did not fall in love with the price. It was $99 and that was just too much for me to pay. So I decided I would make it myself. The first thing that I needed to do was find some wood that was similar to my inspiration piece. I found a cutting board at TJ Maxx that was similar in color. And I turned it over and bonus, it was on clearance for only $6. I was so excited. So I brought it home and I measured it out and I found that I could get four oval links off of this one cutting board. So I made a template. Here's my template. After I measured it, I got a piece of paper and I cut it to the size that I needed, and then I drew an oval. Now on my inspiration piece, their ovals were kind of misshaped a little bit and had some curved edges. So I did the same thing with mine. It's not even as you can see. And when I drew it out, I kind of made some parts thicker and some parts a little bit thinner. I traced out my ovals with a white colored pencil. That way I could see it when I was cutting. The first thing that I did was I got my drill and I drilled access hole points into the center of the ovals. This way I could set my saw blade inside of that and it would be an access hole point. That way I wouldn't have to cut through the sides of the links. So I cut the circles out in the center first with my jigsaw and then I cut the ovals themselves out. I kept doing that until all four of my links were cut out. After I had my oval links, I decided I needed to sand down the edges so I got some sandpaper and I sanded it down until it was really smooth. The Pottery Barn ovals were linked together with some some magic and some extra steps and some craftsmanship, I'm sure. But guess what? Rope's gonna work just fine for me. So I have this rope upstairs and I cut it into about six inch segments. And I'm going to take two of my links, put them together, wrap the rope around it, and then hot glue the edges together. I repeated this three times to link all four of my wooden ovals together. The final thing that I'm going to do to my links is I'm going to add some coconut oil to seal up the wood and to bring out the wood grain. Now I did these three links last night and I left this one for you guys to see the difference. So I just have just plain old coconut oil. You can get this at the grocery store pretty much anywhere. So I'm just gonna take, whoop, it's gonna take a little bit. I'm gonna put it on my paper towel and then I'm just going to rub it along the surface of my link all over the wood can you see i don't know if you can see the difference i'll try and zoom in a little bit but it just makes it look so much richer and so much nicer it really enhances the color of the wood and it makes it so the wood grain is so much more visible and it's a good way to seal up your wood too 
These nautical links turned out beautifully and the only money that I spent was $6 on that wooden cutting board. I had the rope and the hot glue and everything else. So that's a big savings from the $99 Pottery Barn look. Now, I really love the way that they look for summer. However, this is something that I could display all year long on a coffee table or on a shelf or in an office on a desk. If this is the first time visiting my channel, welcome. I'm Lisa. I do DIYs and home decor on my channel. I post weekly videos. I would love to have you join me, so please subscribe. Since we drilled, sawed, and sanded on that last project, this project is gonna be a lot easier. We are going to make a beautiful nautical centerpiece. I'm gonna start off by using this glass container. It's rectangular and I got it a few years ago at Home Goods and it was $6.99. Inside of my glass container, I'm gonna add about two cups of sand to the bottom. Just lay down a nice bed of sand. Try and get it all in there. Okay, just gonna shake it around. Get a nice smooth surface on the bottom, okay. So I've got sand and then I'm gonna add these shells. Again, these are the shells from the Dollar Tree. I really love using them. They've got such a wide variety of sizes, shaped and colored on these shells. So they're gonna be so pretty on top of the sand. Again, I'm just gonna lay these out evenly until the entire surface of the bottom of my container is covered. Okay, to the back side of my vase, I'm going to add a palm frond. I got this from my yard. I live in Florida. I love living here. So this was easy for me just to get. However, if you don't have access to a fresh palm frond, you can just get an artificial one at Michael's or any place that florals are found. So I'm just gonna place that in the back and then I'm gonna add in some water. I'm gonna do it really slowly because I don't want to upset the sand and move the shells around. So I'm just gonna start off really slowly at the first and then I can add it in a little bit quicker. I'm gonna fill this up until it's about two thirds of the way filled. And also as time goes on, the sand that we kind of uh, broke up, that is kind of floating around in the water, it will settle. And then to the top of this, I'm just gonna put in some floating candles. And that's it. Have my shells lay flat and face the front I'm going to drill two holes into my shell now I'm not gonna lie the first time I did this I assumed that these shells were gonna crack and splinter and break apart but they didn't do it and then let me show you how I did it that made it so they stayed intact I got my drill and I'm using a really small drill bit and I'm going to drill in really slowly at the beginning. So I'm just gonna place it on my shell. I'm gonna start drilling slowly. Don't floor it at the beginning. Just slowly ease into it. And that's how you do it. So you can see that I have my hole and it didn't crack. And now I'm going to do another hole on the other side. About maybe half an inch apart. Again, I'm gonna start off really slowly. Okay. And now I have my two holes on my shells. So I'm just gonna repeat this process with the rest of the shells and then I will be able to hang these on my garland. I'm going to string my shells on some cotton twine that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I'm also going to be using some pearls. Look at these cute little pearl beads. Of course, if you have shells, you've gotta have pearls to go along with the shells, right? So I started out by putting the bead on first, bead then shell, bead then shell. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it through the back side of the shell first, and then I'll put it right back through to the front side, and then I'll just pull it. As you can see, I already did a few. And then next I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my bead, and then I'm gonna do one more shell. Again, I'm starting from the back side, and then I'll thread it through the front side. And then I'm going to finish off with one last pearl. Okay, now that everything's on, look at that, look how cute. You can make these as big or as short or as small as you wanted. This is about right for what I need. And then I am going to just tie a knot at the end and then I'm gonna be left with about a foot of excess twine on the end. So I've got about this much, it's about a foot. That way I can tie it onto, in this case, I'm gonna be tying it onto the captain's wheel. And then on this side, I'll do the same. I'm just gonna cut this twine about a foot and I will make that knot. And now our garland is finished. All of these DIYs exceeded my expectations. And for an affordable price, we were able to get five coastal home decor pieces that I'm excited to decorate with this summer and in a few cases all year long. I hope you got some ideas or some inspiration so that you can create some coastal inspired home decor pieces of your own. Thank you so much for watching.